Hey, 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 namaste, Hashi babes. This is Lady Dream, and I'm back at you with another video. Quick reminder before we get into the video. If you guys have not done the three birthday wishes challenge yet, what are you waiting for? Go and do it right now, Hashi babes, okay? Do it right now. If you guys don't know what the three birthday wishes challenge is, it is January, and it is thyroid awareness month, but it is also my birthday this week. You guys have all January long to do it, and if you haven't done it, do it right now. If you guys don't know what it is, the video link will be down in the description box below, okay? So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this video is about to start right about now. Lego! Before we get into the video, I want you guys to follow me on Instagram, which is LadyDream890. And if you guys have not liked and followed my Facebook page yet, it is Life After Hashimoto's. You can follow and like the page. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Today, I will be talking to you guys about Hashimoto's flare-ups. To perfectly describe what a Hashimoto's flare-up is, is basically the trigger and feeling of your Hashimoto symptoms, okay? And when you are in contact with something you just don't tolerate, or maybe it's lipstick, or lip gloss, or food sensitivities, anything, okay? It'll flare up your Hashimoto's and it'll make you feel the symptoms of your Hashimoto's a lot more. The symptoms of a flare-up is fatigue, aches, and pains in your muscles and joints, constipation, unexplained weight gain, skin that's pale and dry, enlarged thyroid goiter, sensitivity to cold, hair that's dry and brittle, hair loss, brittle nails, muscle weakness, slow heart rate, problems with memory, depression, and irregular or heavy menstrual periods. The normal symptoms that we get from Hashimoto's, when we come in contact with anything that is not tolerable to our Hashimoto's, we automatically feel our symptoms, but maybe two times as worse, okay? And it makes us feel horrible. If you guys want to know what causes your flare-ups, I'm about to tell you right now. One of the things that can cause your Hashimoto's flare-ups is low vitamin D levels. Low vitamin D levels can definitely bring on your Hashimoto's and actually flare your symptoms. Up. Vitamin D levels typically drop during the winter and the spring. And this can make you feel more tired, more fatigued. It could cause more bone and muscle pain. Vitamin D levels below 30 milliliters indicate that you don't even have enough vitamin D. So if you're not getting enough of it, then you might need to be put on a um, supplement that you have to be temporarily on for maybe a week, maybe two weeks. If it's less than 20 milliliters, it indicates that you completely lack vitamin D, as in you don't have none. And Hashi Babes, I can't begin to tell you, when I had tested my vitamin D levels through my doctor, results came back. They were extremely, extremely, extremely low. And it's not even me exaggerating. That is my doctor's words, okay? I had to be put on a vitamin D supplement. And it could be either drops or it could be in pill form, okay? For those that tolerate pills, you could do it in pill form. But if you tolerate drops and you're not a pill person, just do it in drops. Vitamin D3 supplements can be an excellent solution to compensate for the lack of sun during the winter months or even the whole year depending on where you live, okay? So there is some places that don't get sun, okay? Seattle is one of those places where it's rare if they do get sunny days because it mostly rains over there, so that would be an example. So it might take about eight weeks of treatment to reach the recommended blood levels of vitamin D. Adequate levels of vitamin D are necessary to prevent flare-ups. When you take your vitamin D, it'll prevent any of the symptoms that you normally feel with your Hashimoto's when you're untreated, all right? So it'll take probably eight weeks at most, which is the minimum, or do not stop taking your vitamin D unless your doctor says so, Hashi babes, all right? So this way, you know, even if the eight weeks is up and you haven't got directions from your doctor yet to be on the safe side, do not stop taking it until they tell you to. Another thing that can cause you to have a Hashimoto's flare up that may trigger your Hashimoto symptoms is low selenium levels. It's an antioxidant. It prevents thyroid damage and inflammation. So it prevents the thyroid from being swollen. 
Your body needs selenium to be able to convert T4 into active T3 hormone. And we did talk about this, okay? I do have a video where I talk about things that will kind of deplete our T4 being converted to T3. It'll, it'll prevent it from doing that. And there are factors. So if you have not seen that yet, I will have the video down in the description box below that will talk about what will prevent your conversions from T4 to T3. Research has shown that taking 200 micrograms of sodium in the form of selenite reduces the TPO antibody levels by more than half after six months of taking it. It's been shown that if you stop selenium intake, TPO antibody levels will go back up again. If you stop taking your selenium, it will go back, okay? There is a way to reverse your TPO antibodies and, and kind of keep them at bay. So if you want to prevent your TPO antibodies from having such a high number, your best bet is to test your selenium and consult with your doctor to see if selenium is what you exactly need to bring down your TPO antibodies, okay? Another thing, and I will emphasize this Hashi base, all right? I understand that we have a lot that goes on in our lives, from working to moving to, you know, symptoms of us being women, which is our menstrual period and all that, and all that good stuff, okay? And then having relationships and managing relationships, I know it can be stressful, okay? And that is the normal stress. But another thing that could flare up your Hashimoto's is long-term stress. So I mean abnormal stress that you should not be stressing about. Sometimes even the normal stress could be a little bit overwhelming, okay? Long-term stress leads to chronic inflammation, reduced sleep quality, changes in appetite, and makes you more prone to gaining weight, okay? If you're stressing about abnormal things that you shouldn't be stressing about, or if there's normal stress that you have to face every day, it can cause you to have a swollen thyroid gland, okay? It could mess with your sleep, it could do all of that. And we can't afford reduced sleep. We cannot afford a swollen gland and we cannot afford to be having these triggers constantly because of stress. Eight out of 10 people with different autoimmune conditions reported experiencing emotional stress before flare-ups, which increases as people get older. Your body copes less with stress the older you are. Basically, when we stress, we have a hard time coping with stress, especially at when we start getting up there in age, it makes it a lot harder. And it'll put more stress on our body and it'll also put more stress on our thyroid. So there are ways to manage your stress, okay? And I'm about to tell you right now. Mindfulness techniques such as meditation have proven to reduce stress levels for many people. If you guys are into meditation, do that to reduce your stress levels, okay? If you guys are into yoga, do that. I'm a yogi myself, okay? Of course, that's why you hear me say namaste <laughs> in every video, all right? So that actually reduces my stress. I haven't been doing it too much lately because um, I usually do it on Facebook Live, but because I've been so distracted into my YouTube and reading about business and managing my household and trying to convert my kitchen and do all that stuff, it is difficult okay but I try not to stress myself too much about it so what I do is I do yoga and it actually really helps me if you guys like journaling that can help too that can help reduce your stress listening to music what have you whatever your outlet is do it all right food sensitivities now if you guys don't know what food sensitivity is a lot of people could mistake this with food allergies and I could understand why they may mistake it. And it's because food allergies and food sensitivities, you know, they have the same hand in hand process with testing. But what they don't tell you is, is that food allergies, when you get tested for it, they're testing for anaphylaxis shock, okay? That's what they're really testing for. And an anaphylaxis reaction, that's what they're testing for. But what food sensitivity testing is for is, Food sensitivity testing is what your immune system is irritated by, what it can't tolerate, what would cause your leaky gut, what would cause your digestive issues, what would cause your irritable bowel syndrome, what would cause your Hashimoto's flare-ups. That is what food sensitivities are. You wanna know what foods would flare up your Hashimoto's. A diet that's high in processed and or prepackaged foods, which is high in salt, sugar, and fatty 
effects is a known trigger of autoimmune flare-ups. I just talked about this. So anything that is like Western diet that we normally on, like pre-packaging and the processed foods and all that, which I just told you about, those are things that could actually flare up. So like for instance, like if I decided to buy regular waffles, that is processed with a lot of wheat, gluten, and soy, and other things that don't necessarily agree with us, okay? And that and those symptoms could flare up. So for instance, like I have a dairy intolerance, a soy intolerance, and a gluten intolerance. And I can't have that stuff. If I have I have just a little bit of dairy or a little bit of wheat or a little bit of gluten or a little bit of soy, my stomach gets very aggravated, okay? And not only that, but my face swells and I get hives. Either one of those symptoms or all three can happen. So that is what an example of a food sensitivity is and what exactly it does. Eating both foods that you are sensitive to and a Western pattern diet changes the balance of bacteria in your gut, aka the microbiome. When you eat things that your stomach can't tolerate or things that are unhealthy and that's bad for you while you're on Hashimoto's, even as a person without it, what you're doing is you're messing with your digestive system. And what it does is it damages your digestive system and it gives you a leaky gut. And you will have a lot, a lot of sensitivity with your digestive system, which brings on irritable bowel syndrome, which brings on GERD. It brings on unnecessary digestive issues that you don't want. Trust me, you don't want Hashi Babes, okay? You really don't. I have those issues. And the last thing you need is to mess up your gut. And your gut is also known as your microbiome. You don't want to damage that. The number of harmful bacteria increases, which can destroy your gut barrier, causing leaky gut. So, hence what I just said. The best way to prevent diet-related flare-ups is to eat a wide variety of whole foods that you aren't sensitive to. In order for you to really understand what you're sensitive to, you need a food sensitivity test. Okay, that's exactly what that is. And your food sensitivity test, do not let a doctor tell you, oh, a food sensitivity test is the same as a food allergies test. It's similar, but no, it's not. You can understand why they say that, but it's not the same. You need to know what irritates your gut and what's causing your leaky gut and what's causing your Hashimoto's symptoms and flare-ups and, and what triggers it. You need a food sensitivities test. And when they test you, it's similar to a regular allergy test, but except the results will come up letting you know what you're actually sensitive to and what your gut is sensitive to, okay? The next thing is, you Hashi babes are gonna be very surprised by this. My Hashimoto's gets triggered by this. Your menstrual cycle can also trigger your Hashimoto's and here's why. So for me, whenever I get my menstrual cycle or my menstrual period, I notice that I get the itching sensation like as if my hives are about to come, but except of course, I am on Zolaire injections. And if you guys don't know what Zolaire injections is, I do have a video down in the description box below that will tell you all the details about what Zolaire injections is. And I have a vlog of me getting my Zolaire injections. And that will also be down in the description box below. So because I get the Zolaire injections, I don't get the hives. Whenever I do have a flare up, I do get the sensation. I don't get the hives at all. And I will feel fatigued. I will get all the symptoms with my Hashimoto's when I do have my menstrual cycle, okay? For your menstrual cycle, it's common for autoimmune diseases to appear around the time of puberty and menopause. So it is common. For, and it will be common for those with Hashimoto's, even though it says that people with Hashimoto's most likely get it in their 50s and 60s. That's the most common age. But people who are middle aged or younger can also get it as well. It's rare, but they can get it. Hormonal changes impact the immune system and can trigger flare ups. It has a lot to do with your hormone. For us women, we have estrogen and progesterone, okay? We have a lot of estrogen. Normally what happens is, usually your flare up happens after it ends. That's normally common. But for me, my flare ups happen before my period starts and during my period. It never does it at the end, okay? So it's rare because my body's different. Everybody's body's different. But for most women, 
they get the flare-ups after their period's over, okay? It's a hormonal thing. It's, it's nothing we have control over. When our hormones are high, that's when we get the triggers when our periods go. The hormone estrogen is more present during the first half of the menstrual cycle, which is the follicular phase, 10 days to two weeks after the period, which can cause flare-ups. Now, if you guys don't know what the follicular phase is, it is 10 days to two weeks after your period. And that's when we normally get the flare-ups and that's common, okay? That's the common way of us having a flare-up, okay? For those that are not menstrual savvy, because I'm telling you, for me, I wasn't menstrual savvy. I was kind of a late bloomer, so I just got hip to the whole menstrual cycle thing in my mid-20s. Pretty much, there is an app called the Flow app and it will tell you what phase you're in during your menstrual cycle. Not only does it give you the numbers of how long your menstrual period lasts, not only does it give you the the days that you're fertile, which turns blue by the way, which is so cool. And then not only that, but it gives you whether you're high risk of, of being pregnant or low risk of pregnancy. It lets you know your fertile window or your non-fertile window, but it also tells you the phases that you're in with your menstrual cycle. It even has experts talk to you through a chat, all that good stuff. If you guys are interested in having that app for your phone, I'm gonna put the app down in the description box below. For those that are interested in learning more about their period and their body and everything else in between and exactly what phases you're in and keeping track of your menstrual flow. The next thing that causes a Hashimoto's flare-up, and trust me, I had to learn the hard way. I suffer from insomnia, and that's not a good thing, okay? And it doesn't help that insomnia is another symptom of Hashimoto's, which sucks. One thing that can give you a flare-up, and I've had plenty of flare-ups because of this, and that is insufficient sleep. Not getting enough sleep, that's a no-no, okay? That would cause you to have a flare-up. Just one night of bad sleep can mess up your immune system. A recurring pattern of poor sleep will cause flare-ups. Flare-ups from lack of sleep can change the pattern of how your brain regulates sleep, which can lead to even worse sleeping patterns. A must, a must, a must for you Hashi babes. Get some sleep. Sleep at a proper time, even if you have to put yourself on melatonin. Even if you have to consult with your doctor on being put on the right sleeping meds, okay? Whether if it's naturopathic or going to your primary care. Do that. Consult with your doctor on how to get you to sleep, okay? If you guys tried everything, all right? One thing that I could honestly say if you guys are having trouble sleeping, one thing that can relax you, smelling lavender before you go to sleep or taking an Epsom salt bath, putting lavender in your bathtub or eucalyptus. Try those things. And if you try everything, you still can't just get to sleep, consult with your doctor because they may be able to do a sleep apnea test on you to figure out why you're not sleeping. Your doctor can also put you on sleeping meds too as well. So either way, get some good sleep, Hashi babes. We need it, we need our beauty best. That's how we stay beautiful. The last thing that can trigger our Hashimoto's is bacterial and viral infections, okay? The more we have bacteria infections, the more we get flare-ups, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why and what that is. This happens because viruses that infect your throat or intestine invade your thyroid as well, which causes an inflamed thyroid. So, Hashi babes, I was surprised when I first got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, but then again, I didn't put two and two together until I started learning more about Hashimoto's and why we get it and how. But one of the things that I did notice and that I did reflect back on, I did reflect back on this. I used to have a lot of throat issues. I used to have strep every month to every other month to every year to every other year. And for some reason now, I don't get strep throat anymore. I found it weird when I stopped getting strep throat and then lo and behold, I ended up having Hashimoto's. Strep throat and having throat infections can cause you to have Hashimoto's and have a Hashimoto's flare. Having bacterial infections can also cause you to have a Hashimoto's flare up as well. It can put you at risk of Hashimoto's as well. So that's not surprising to me. It did come as a surprise as I started learning on, but it didn't come as a surprise to me after a while because I had to literally reflect and go back and really think, Dad, I did have a lot of throat problems when I was younger. Maybe that kind of explains why I have Hashimoto's now and why I get the flare-ups now every time I have a bacterial infection, okay? I was prone to those. I hope you liked this video. I want you guys to like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification bell to be notified for when new videos are available, 
all right? I want you guys to become a Hashi Babe, just like me, okay? I am on the road to a thousand Hashi Babe subscribers, and I am looking to reach that goal. So please, Hashi Babes, subscribe, 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 okay? I love you guys. I want you guys to stay clean, stay safe, wash your hands, and don't be nasty. And wear your mask everywhere you go, okay? It is still COVID, even though it is a whole new year now. We are still not out of the woods with this COVID-19 thing. I'm sick of COVID. I know you guys are sick of COVID too, but we have to stay safe. And you guys are too beautiful of kings and queens to be up in somebody's hospital being sick with COVID now, all right? I wish you guys nothing but love, peace, and positivity. I love you guys, all right? So subscribe, 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 and I will see you in the next video, all right? Talk to you guys soon. Love you guys. Namaste. <laughs> Bye.